Hello friends, loved ones, and amazing people that are the internet. Uh, welcome to Friday, hope you're fantastic and amazing. Can't believe we are at the end of a week. Feels really weird, doesn't it? Well, I think it does when we've got public holidays and everything else, and today it's, it's really cold here today and we, my son ran in cross country. So I decided to remain in my active gear. Acti active gear, active wear for the whole entire day. So, and I'm reluctant to do my hair because I'm gonna go get my hair done shortly, um, in about 15 minutes actually. So I thought I'd come to you quickly live post school run to share a, the answer to a question that I had in one of my private client groups today or yesterday that I think is a really, um, important question, actually. So the question was around, uh, actually, the, the comment and then the question was something along the lines of, well, Nicola, you know, all the things that you do is around this whole rock star theme, um, you know, is that something that we should be doing? And my answer to that is you've got to do what feels right for you, right? That That's the first thing. Now, for me, I find it somewhat easier to have a an overall concept or an overall feeling of what I want to create. So back in 2012, I was, you know, my business had started to grow. I was getting clients. I, I started teaching online courses and things like that in 2012, running mentoring programs and mastermind programs and and all that kind of fun stuff. Had a, was having a blast doing it in 2012. But by the time, actually, funny story, almost to the days, so on the 24th of April, 2012, I did my last ditch effort Facebook advertising campaign where I decided if this didn't work, I'm out. You know, I'll take that sign from the universe that I should be that it's done, that it's all over, that this is not what I should be doing. And so 2012 came along, I think it was the week after that, Ziva. The week following that, or like the first week of May, May was my first $30,000 in sales month ever. I made more money that month than I'd made in, in a really, really, really long time. It was just completely, it was ridiculous. I was like, oh my God, thank fuck that worked because <laughs> I did not want to go and get a job. It was the, the last thing that I wanted to do. So seven years later, it's kind of funny that, um, you know, we're, we're talking about these types of things again because at that point in time, I was just like, screw you theming. I just want, I just want things that work. And the reality is that, you know, things are, things were very different seven years ago in terms of Facebook advertising and, and the cost per lead that we were able to get and the way we were able to market. But what I did experience towards the end of that year was that, so I was, a lot of my advertising was around using Facebook for business, Facebook for marketing. Uh, I think one of the things was stand out and be seen as a super hot, awesome expert that you are, was one of the taglines on a Facebook page banner um, that I had back in the day, which was a lot of fun. But it got to the point where it's like, well, every man and his dog had seemingly overnight become a Facebook ads expert. And I was like, what the fuck? You know, something, something has to be done in terms of being able to be seen as being different and things like that. Roll around to March 2013 and I, like my leads were coming, I was getting webinar leads for around $2 a lead, which is just unheard of at the time. Um, I had a pile of people, like no joke, probably that tall of, of printed A4 pieces of paper, people to call about about the about the programs that I was running and the marketing that I was doing and so that they could they could learn. It was just, it was, a, it was an insane time, but the competition was also fierce. And one of the things through talking to a mentor of mine at the time is like, well, you know, how can we bring in a little bit more of me? You know, how can we bring in a little bit more theater? How can we bring in uh, a bit more entertainment factor? And so one of the things that we came up with was sales and marketing spy school and which is a signature, my signature four day event. Uh, three day for general people, four days for VIP. And it was like, right, sales and marketing spy school, this sounds really awesome. Now, the way that that name came about was about sitting down and going, all right, well, 
Uh, number one, what kind of movies do I love? What kind of books do I love to read? What do I like to do for holidays and, and holiday activities? And if money, time and anything was no issue, what would I want to do? And it always came back to adrenaline, excitement, a little bit of mystery, you know, problem solving. Um, and one of the things that I really loved to, to do was, you know, watch movies. So the types of movies and the types of TV shows that I loved to watch were action movies, spy movies, things that were kind of like, have you sitting on the edge of your seat being like, oh, wow, this is, you know, this is really cool. Badass women, uh, typically like Jennifer Garner in that TV show Alias, um, Annie Walker in that TV show Covert Affairs, um, you know, really powerful kick-ass women who were also doubling up as spies. I was like, I'm totally, I could totally be a spy. I could totally be Jennifer Garner. And so we kind of like pulled in all of these different elements and sales and marketing spy school was born. As a result of that, what then started to flow was the name of my online programs and they, I called them the secret agent online program. I called them like my mastermind program at the time, or sorry, my one-on-one -on -one program at the time was called The Agency. Then I, I ran a program that was the farm boot camp, which is like the farm, like the Langley farm, uh, the training camp. So like everything that I ended up being able to do, all the imagery and stuff like that, all started to weave in this kind of spy, kick-ass, adrenaline type thing. And it was awesome. While while it was awesome, it was awesome. It was it was why my site, the tagline on my site was kick ass online business and marketing strategies. Uh, I was known for a long time as the as the that kick ass marketing chick, just because like that was the way that I kind of branded myself and sales and marketing spy school kind of came along. Hey, Geordie, happy Friday! And so that was kind of how that evolved and and came to life. I probably hung on to that branding and that theme though for a little long, to be honest. Um, what's since been born is around this, uh, like the rock star kind of stuff that I do. And the, and the reason that that came about was more around, you know, who, what did I feel like I needed to sort of step into in order to create some fun and theater and drama and, you know, what makes it easy for me? You know, what would I be doing if time, money, and energy and location and all that stuff was no object, no issue? What would I be doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm on freaking Madison Square Garden stage singing, performing, you know, kind of like pink styles. Um, you know, putting on a show, it's not just about, if I was ever to be a singer, it's not just about standing at the front of the stage with a microphone. It's like, putting on a freaking badass performance, right? And so it's like, right, well, how can I create that kind of feeling in my stuff? So that happened around October last year. So for me, it works really well. It helps me then with the imagery that I select. It helps me with um, the, the way that I write. It helps with the stories that I tell. It helps with all of that. But Oh, thanks, Jordy. It's freaking cold here. It's like I have to have a hoodie on. It's ridiculous. Um, however, the thing for you is that if it becomes hard work, then maybe that's something that you want to leave aside for the time being. So the first step that I'd suggest that you undertake is, number one, what kind of word, what's, what's your, do you have a thing for the year? Like what's the word that you would use um, almost as like a guiding force for your year this year? Is it um, like it's a hell yes or a hell no? Is it badass? Is it um, angelic? Is it metamorphosis? Is it transformation? You kind of want it to be something that is really kind of visceral. Maybe it's around calm, maybe it's foundation, maybe it's fly. Um, maybe it's Phoenix, you know, I don't know, like what word would describe what you want to really embrace and feel for this whole entire year? That can be helpful to start with. The second thing that I'd really encourage you to do is go and do a stock take almost of the kinds of books, not business, 
but what kind of books would you like to read if you, <laughs> if, you, if you don't create the time for reading? Like, what would you read if you create the time for reading? What kind of movies do you like to watch? Like, what's the kind of genre? What is it about them that you like? What is it about them that you love? Because uh, that's really a great indicator and something that you're really going to be able to sink your teeth into in terms of creating some type of thematic um, or uh, some kind of common thread ripple through through all of this stuff. The third thing is uh, like a bit of a clue is, well, you know, what did you want to do or who did you want to be when, when you were growing up, when you were a kid? Is it about being that performer? Is it about being a healer? Was it a teacher? Was it a lawyer? You know, I don't know. Like what kinds of things were you were you thinking about what kinds of things did you dream about being that type of stuff because that will often give you and these are not you don't have to do these steps in in order they can kind of like weave in however it is that you like right so do that and then the thing that you'll be doing is going okay cool so how can i or what can i put out there that is going to to tie in and weave in with all of that. So let's say that your word for the year was nourish and you really wanted to make sure that everything was about nourishment, uh, nourishing you, nourishing like self, family, soul, relationships, business, money, you know, whatever that nourishment word comes into for you. And then you might go, oh, look, you know, I really love those romantic comedies. I like mysteries as well. Then you could perhaps look at tying in, all right, well, if I like mysteries and you like a bit of romance and that kind of thing, then how can you tie nourish in with all of that and create some theming? So it might be like um, all of... The, the day spa type imagery that you get in your head, you know, rocks sitting stacked up on a beach. Um, what you're going to do then in terms of if you're going have, having some photos taken and stuff like that, getting some branding photos taken, then that can help you to go, right, well, this is the feeling that I need to invoke, right? Where this backfires. So just remember this, I was at an event in 2015 and one of the things that we were being gifted for being at this particular event was the um, the ability to have some photos taken by a, a professional photographer, who incidentally was supposed to be a photographer. <laughs> it's a bug. That's weird. Um, incidentally, a photographer who was supposedly the a photographer for um, famous musicians and stuff like that, like taking album photos. And I'm just like... Oh, badass that's that's totally me I'm all over that yes 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 I also play roller derby you know so you know I'm just I'm all up there and the photos that she took so like she looked like a freaking badass like tattoos and short and you know leather jacket and you know kind of funky and stuff and I was like okay cool she gets me this is great oh my god the photos are fucking awful um there was zero channeling of rock stariness. There was zero channeling of badassery. It was just, they fell flat on their face. So you've got to make sure, and I didn't organize the photographer. It was just sort of part and parcel of what I was doing. So you've got to make sure that the, the people that you get around you are going to be able to kind of like tap into what it is that you want to do and what it is that you want to create, particularly if you're um, looking at getting photos taken and stuff like that. So yeah, that's that. I hope that helps. Um, the one thing that I did want to talk with you about briefly is around the it factor. This is a kind of thing where, you know, it, it's not just, it's like anything, right? It's not just a, a quick fix. It is something that takes time. It also, excuse me, it can also take evolution as well around this kind of thing you don't have to get it straight away but the thing that's going to help you to stand out is number one is consistency of brand right number two it's about doing things differently now we all know that you can go out there and you can talk about your expertise you can go and talk about the thing that you know you can talk about your wisdom and everything else but one of the things that's really going to help you to stand out is by 
weaving stories and weaving themes in through everything. And that is something that we're really working on in the It Factor as well over the course of these next six months. So we do start on the 10th of May. It is super, super exciting. Now, there are five places left in the, the fast action thingy-me-jig. So if you want to shout out to my audience where I, I said yesterday, like we've had people make tens of thousands of dollars literally from me promoting you guys through to my email list, my social media channels. Um, so I'd really love to, you know, I'd love to be able to do that with you. There are some other bonuses in there as well, like $1,000 Nicola cash. Imagine my head with the fabulous hair that's going to be back in my head in about the next hour, like Nicola's head on a, um, on a bill, on a, on a thousand dollar bill, right? The greenback. Um, so the it factor is all about you creating and cultivating the it factor. I know you've got it within you. I know that there is something in there that is all about, you know, being something more, doing something bigger, having a bigger impact. You know, you know that you are destined for more, that you're destined for greatness, that you are, God forbid, you know, you, you, you are here to live a life that is a lot less ordinary. Um, in fact, I wrote this morning that ordinary is like kryptonite for the soul, like death for the soul or something like that. It's like, oh my gosh. You know, I don't think any of us here uh, think that being average is how we're supposed to be or where we're supposed to be or, or how we're going to create impact in the world. So the it factor, yeah, there's like we get your PR ready, we make sure that you've got your book planning all done. We make sure that you've got a very narrow focus so that you know exactly what it is that you're working on, how it is that you're going to do it, what it is that you're going to do. So uh, if you want to hear more about that, then make sure you message me either through here and then I can flick you through a bit more information. We can chat about it. And if it's a great fit, then that is awesome. And if not, then that's totally cool too. All right. Have an amazing Friday, everybody. I trust that that helps you. If you've got questions about this, let me know. Jordy, yes, down here too. It's like ice. Yeah, I'm not prepared for winter at all. In fact, that's why I'm escaping to the Gold Coast next week. Bring on Champagne Supernova. I'm just saying, two-day event on the Gold Coast next weekend. Can't freaking wait. Can't wait for the warmth. All right, have an amazing weekend. I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.